So Ma, when was the first time you came to Roda? Uh, first time I came to Roda, 1974. 1974, two canoes from uh, Saruman to Saiban, but uh, first Roda. Uh, because uh, I, I, I have one canoe, then another navigator has one. Then we found a Roda. Then I say, I told him, not Saiban. Then I say, no, no Saiban. No. I know Saiban is here. Different mountain than Roland. Then he said, No, 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 Saiban. Then we go in, not Saiban. We get uh, six turtles from West Fire. Then the one guy is from Yap. He worked there. He's the doctor. Then we give one uh, turtle, then to come up to Saiba. Then Guam, uh, Rora and Saiba. Before the people, before they come, Guam is Kuyam, not Guam. Kuyam. Yeah, that's the guy he put an end there. Then now he's the they say Roda, not Roda. Luther. Luther. And Tenian is now they call Tenian. But before this, they call Chilean. Like Saipan. Saipan now is they say Saipan. 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 Saipan is means uh, uh, they they uh, they sell to Saipan. Nobody nobody wants that. Maybe the island. That's why they they put a name Saipan. Saipan means uh, selling. Burn is empty. So when they sell to Saipan. Yeah. The people say it's no, nobody. After uh, Spanish, Aye. they killed the people. Aye. So, Mao, you know, Guam, the Chamaro, they say, we want to learn how to sail. You think this is a good place, a short place to sail, because the island is one day away to practice, to begin to learn about sailing? Um, Build a canoe and sail to yeah. another island, close, I mean. Yeah, I think, I think one is better, better than Yap. But now, the chief in Yap, uh, in like, uh, this trip finished, then I go to Yap, I'm going to teach the people in Yap. Yap, Yap is different, different one. But the people in the Apple is not too good. They, they like a high chief or what? Yeah. So you think, Guam, when we just come, that they're really sincere in wanting to learn? Yeah. And to build canoes and learn how to sail? and how to sail. sail. Yeah. But, uh, I was thinking when I come teach in Guam, everybody people uh, in Chung, in Yap, in Palau, yeah, Guanabe, Usai, Macho, they come to, to Guam. And I come to Guam. Ah. What island they would sail to? Which one out of all the islands, the first island, maybe the Kanu sail from Guam? With all the ones that learn. Namchuk. 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 Then, 
after Sadwan and Nato Pursu. But some island came to Guam and Saipan, they come on a ship. Not too many islands they sail from uh, from home to Guam, Saipan. It's too far? No, not too far. Maybe they they are afraid. Like uh, this time. I know everybody like there they know the the direction to Guam and Saipan. But they don't sail. Yeah, they don't sail. Because the typhoon? Some they they think about the typhoon. Some maybe they scared when they get lost and then they will come back. That's why this time it is only me. I um, back and forth because so I know. Some left there in Purwat, some in Purusu. Said one, but they never said it. You know, in Rhoda, what kind of supplies we can get? Plenty of banana, plenty of fruits, coconuts? Oh, yeah. What Rhoda? Rhoda is the plenty of local food than, than Guam. It's warm. Yeah. Because the people in there, see, they plant the, the local food. Aye. So they farm plenty yes, of the farm. local food. Oh yeah, Wanta Mountains. Aye. Big farm Wanta Mountains. Aye. So you think uh, uh, the canoes from Guam in the future, or even from other islands, will be inspired by Makalese? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it'll make them want to do it. Yeah. When they, when they like to learn, but uh -huh. not too good when, when they like I come to teach in Guam, but only for them learn, nobody try. Eh? Not too good. It's good, good in Hawaii because uh, you guys like to learn, then you guys like to uh, like make. Try. Yeah. You guys like to try. But you know the people in here, in Chamro guys, nobody selling before. But they say they sell from there to to Guam to Saibar, but I don't know from from. <laughs> and if, I know see the canoe uh, for them. Yes. So now we have Tony is on the Makali yeah. from, and they say first time. They want to... Oh, him is first time, or some Lucas is first time they go on a canoe. Yes. So this is really important. It's yeah. the first time. Nobody, uh, nobody said people. Uh, some of people. Mao, you think Hawaiian canoe can sail in this kind of ocean? Maybe small, like a Eala, small kind. Yeah, I think can. Huh? Can, because... Uh, the, the ocean in Micronesia is different. Hawaii. It's different. Hawaii is different. But maybe smaller canoe than Makali. Then you take less people like your canoe. Yeah. Yeah. So plenty plenty canoes can go. Go together. So they yeah, feel yeah, yeah. they're not afraid because they all sail together. Yeah, that's why the new then governor he say she, she like a couple track of yes. it there. Then me, I think I was thinking maybe I try I, I teach about the left river, then teach the teach about the field. Yeah, I like it, make yeah. it many canoe. Canoe. Yeah. So they, they can try sell from Guam to Saiba. So the lieutenant governor. She wants you to teach, yeah. and if she can get the government to help build the canoes, yeah, yeah. then all the Chamaro yeah. with their canoes and 
with you teaching the navigation, yeah. they can sail again. Sail again. And then, now you see plenty people from uh, Autorena in India. Autorena in Chuk, in Pornby. They, they, they live there, this one. Yeah. In Saipan too. Then, let's start. The people I, I like, I call them, they come uh, uh, help me for fill the canoe and mm -hmm. this island road is, they have a big, uh, big trees, Ulu, Ulu, Ulu But the teachers, they don't have the, uh, they don't have the builders who remember how to carve the canoes, the teachers, to build the canoes, build the canoes. They have the trees, yeah, but, yeah. but do they have the ones who know how to oh, make no, the canoes? Nobody, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Guam have plenty of trees? I didn't see too no, much no, no, big no, 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 no. trees. No. They have uh, ulu, but uh, it's not big. Not big, yeah. It's straight. Only this island. Saipan too. Saipan like Guam. But, say, but this island, Roda in Saipan, is not part of Guam, man. Eh? Oh. It's separate. Separate. Oh, so it's, it's a good uh, relationship yeah. <laughs> to, help, to, to help build the canoes again. Guam is uh, like uh, America. Yes. United States. Because I think if the United States have many islands, then plenty of the trees, the trees, yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. from the different islands can come to help the canoe and the navigation facility. Yeah, that's what the hotel the coffer in Guam. She say she wanna accompany in Guam. Then. I remember the Alpicia. Alpicia? Yes, the Alpicia. Yeah, Plenty. Alpicia. Plenty of Alpicia. You think when we get Cyper that they give Ulu trees from Rodo to help build canoes? Yeah, because Saipan have Ulu, but only this island have big Ulu. Ulu. Like uh, Rota is like uh, our run and in in Chuk in India. They have plenty big holes. So Mao, you have any story you tell about, about this island? Mm. Good, good. Huh? Any secret stories you wanna tell about this island? No? I don't know that. You have yeah, only, children here? Only the story I know before the one after uh, after Spanish. Yeah. But before for I don't know Chamorro people they say them the first come to Guam, Saipan, Rota. But uh, I don't know they say them the first they come. But I don't know they come. What, uh, on, that, on the ship or on what? But I, I never see that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Does anyone, Papa, remember the name of Rota before the Spanish killed all people? What the original people called it? The name of what? The name of Rota before the Spanish came and killed uh, the original people that lived on the island. Does anyone know what they called the island? Oh, I don't know, but I know that the name they say Guam. Now is they say Guam, Guam before. Guam, yeah, Guam. After after uh, Spanish, they come kill the people in here, in here. and then the next girl they come from 
my island and, uh, and they put the name. You um, put the in your sleeper. All the way up to uh, some island north from Saipan. What was the name? What's the other name besides Roda for this one? This one. What's the oldest name you know this one? Not Roda, it's another name. Lute. 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 What does that mean? What does Lute mean? They, they come to Guam and they, they look the, the island up there, up, up uh, covered in uh, Guam. That's why they, they say Lute. Lute means up. Up. Yeah. Now, you were saying when you come, the harbor is on this side? Yeah. When you come with your canoe? Yeah, see that's Small island, okay? This is the big one. This side. Is the only place to land the canoe? Is, huh? there, is there other places to land the canoe? No, no. Only one only place. One. Now, Makali get enough space for the big canoe to go? I think so, I think. Eh? Yes. But a little bit bad because not not straight. Eh? You have to turn. I get nice place to make canoe house over there. Yeah, to yeah. Bring some, your canoe up yeah. for make a new house. Some place. Uh, okay. Very good. So we go Saipan and we ask where we can make canoe house. Yeah. To bring the ulu trees. To bring the oh, bring in Saipan because. Saiban is the uh, Roda and Huam is they don't have a, a nice beach. Yes. But Saiban is nice. 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 When we was in Guam, you see a place where we can make nice canoe house where the canoe can build and go inside the ocean? Guam, get nice places for make canoe house, build canoes? Oh yeah, some some place. Have in Guam? Some place. Yeah. So you know where you want to build your build your canoe then because Yeah when when I come uh, it's in Guam then I know the place where they I build the house for for the canoe for make the canoe. How long for make one canoe Mao, you think? My canoe is one year. One year? And to build a canoe house. You must make the house first? And then yeah, you... yeah. How, how long for build the canoe? Oh, almost, almost one year. One year to build the house? Yeah. And then... Almost one year. Yes. And then almost one year to build the canoe? One year build the canoe and almost one year build the house. Right. So it's two years? Yeah. At least two years. Aye. Because uh, no more, no more uh, what? No more tools for make big fresh, yeah? like chainsaw. Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> aye, aye. No more machine for make big fresh. Now, now it's a little bit better because some something used to. So maybe the lieutenant governor can help. Oh yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, Two years, we can have a new, build a new canoe house you can, yeah. and have a ceremony from the forest to bring the trees mm -hmm. and build a new canoe. I don't know. Me, yeah, I think maybe they buy some uh, some tree from uh, somewhere, like you buy the tree from uh, New Zealand or Malina. Uh, Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, because the Micronesia is here, I don't know. Wanape. Wanape. I saw some uh, trees. Big trees. For canoe? 
you can take some. Lake Kano. How big the how big the tree must be? How big the tree? Um, Thirty feet. Forty feet. Forty feet tall. And how big around? Three people go around? Yeah. Three people go around. Around the <coughs> And we can build one like Hokulia, same as Hokulia, with one. Which one Hokulia? Yeah. Man? Yeah. 30 feet, 40 feet tree. Yeah, Hokulia is 31. So it's, it's the size, that's the size of the canoe? Yeah. Big like that. But uh, I think better when they start learning the people, uh, Micronesian people, then better they build this kind. Double hop. Double hop. Let's see. Carry more people. Yeah. Mm. When I come to teach in Guam, then I want to talk to the, the governor. <clears throat> what about the water? Because it's too good when I teach the navigator, then nobody's saying stay on the land is not good. Not good. Better we, when they not learn, and they, they learn, they go. Try. To sail from Guam to Saipan, how long? Um, my canoe is uh, three days. Three days. What one day? Yes. So it's not much time not much to time. sail. It's, it's, it's very... To build a canoe, yeah. one year, build a house, two year, and then to sail in the ocean is maybe three days, one week if you stay plenty days, go down and other islands. But uh, it's, a, it's a short trip that they can make to come up and go home. Right. Thank you, Mao. Mm -hmm. oh. Hey, Hawaii, hey, Moku, hey, Kanaka, hey, Kanaka, Hawaii. Hey. Here is Hawaii. An island, a man. Hey, kanaka Hawaii, hey, kama na kaiki, hey, buali i mai kapaa, mai moa ula nui a kea kanalo. Hawaii is a man, a child of Tahiti. Hawaii, final land for all for Tahitian mariners who crossed the Pacific more than a thousand years ago. In 1976, a canoe set out from Hawaii to retrace the legendary voyaging route to Tahiti. The canoe is guided by one of the last keepers of an ancient art, Mao Piailag. <laughs> The trip to Tahiti was very important for me. I know the people of Tahiti and Hawaii once navigated as we do. They didn't use instruments, they navigated by the stars and waves. I made the trip to show those people what their ancestors used to know and what we still know. Mao 
Mao's home waters are in Micronesia, 2,000 miles to the west of Hawaii. Tiny islands are separated by vast ocean distances, and the people depend on navigators like Mao for survival. <laughs> The navigators of Satawal are the last of a nation of sailors who once settled the entire Pacific. The Pacific Ocean, larger than all of the Earth's continents combined. When Europeans first glimpsed this immense sea, virtually all of its more than 10,000 islands had already been discovered by a more daring nation of seafarers. In the most remote islands of the Western Pacific, the secrets of navigation are still passed down from one generation to the next. Satawal is a tiny coral atoll, one mile square and barely eight feet above sea level. Mao Pialug learned to navigate from his father and grandfather. Now it is Mao's turn to pass on his skills. At sunset, he teaches his nephew to recognize signs of weather in the sky and sea. The shapes and colors of the sky and the words of his teacher will one day guide Mao's nephew across the ocean. Our navigation is different from yours. I don't need a map or a sextant. I just use my head. I observe the ocean and the sky. And I remember the words of my teachers. There are two kinds of navigators. Man who only knows how to sail is called Palu. But the man who knows both sailing and magic is called Po. To become Po, you have to be initiated in a special ceremony. The Po ceremony has not been formed for more than 20 years. Mao was the last man on his island to be, to be initiated in, into the secrets of both magic and navigation. The sea is the men's domain. The land on Satawal belongs to the women. Mao and his wife Katrina have 16 children. On Saturdays, the women of their family gathered to prepare food. Coconut, breadfruit, and taro are staples throughout the Pacific. These food plants are not native to the islands. All were imported by the first settlers. Mao is 50 years old. He learned navigation when he was very young. My grandfather taught me navigation when he rested from his work. I listened carefully until he died. And then my father taught me. When I could finally sail alone, I realized how important navigation was. The men who can't navigate are not looked up to. 
They don't have a name. Two or three times a year, all the men of Atawawa organize a communal fishing expedition. Mao gives final instructions. Santa is surrounded by a reef that is small and provides very little food. To protect the reef, the chiefs may place a taboo on all fishing. And only rarely do they allow an event like this. A full day's work by all the men nets only 200 pounds of fish. 500 people live on Santawal, 35 separate family groups, and the catch must be divided fairly among them. Mupia Pialot is a saunet, master of dividing. The reef around Satawal is not good. We don't have enough fish, so we depend on other islands for food. The reef on West Fayul is full of fish. It's our storehouse. If we couldn't sail there, we'd starve. When you go to sea, everyone looks up to the navigator. He's responsible for the lives of everyone on his canoe, so he makes all the decisions. The crew are like his children. With fair winds, the trip to West Fayou takes 10 hours. Mao uses the time to teach his crew about the ocean's wells. Mao recognizes eight separate patterns of ocean swells. He uses them to set his course at sea. West Fayou is surrounded by a large lagoon which shelters an abundance of sea life. We call West Fayou the island of free lunch 
because there's so much food here. West Fayu belongs to Satawal. People from other islands must ask our permission to fish here, but we always give it. They wouldn't ask if they didn't need the food. The crew fished the reef for three days. They caught 700 pounds of fish, almost four times what the entire village caught on Satawal, and two sea turtles, a special delicacy. At a small chapel in the center of the island, the men pray for a safe journey home. In the past, Mao offered powerful magic to Yalulue, the patron spirit of navigators. Now the men pray to a Christian god. People have thrown away the old spirits. In the old days, a navigator had more authority. Because he knew magic, the men of his crew respected him more. Once every island had navigators. Now only a few have them. If we're not careful, navigation will die out here. The navigators of Santoal are among the last to practice skills once common throughout the Pacific. Barely 200 years ago, European explorers began to look closely at the Pacific Islanders. In 1779, two ships of the British Royal Navy dropped anchor off Hawaii for the first time. The commander, Captain James Cook, was a sensitive observer, deeply curious about the islanders he met. He commissioned artists to record their way of life. years of exploration, Cook visited almost every major island group in the South Pacific. Everywhere, he found striking similarities in dance, government, and religion, a common culture. Cook had discovered the Polynesians. Where had these people come from? How had they carried their culture so far? Today, scientists recognize three different cultures in the Pacific. Polynesia, in the Central Pacific, is the largest group of islands. Melanesia lies to the west. Satawal, to the north, is part of Micronesia. The Polynesians could have migrated from one of two places, Asia or the Americas. Powerful winds, winds and currents flow from east to west in the Pacific. If the Polynesians came from Asia, they sailed directly against these currents and winds. But if they came from the Americas, they simply drifted to the islands they settled. The prevailing winds and currents convinced Thor Heyerdahl that the Polynesians drifted from South America. 
In 1947, Heyerdahl and a five-man crew launched Kantiki on a daring adventure to prove his theory. Kantiki could not be steered. For months, the men were carried westward in the grip of powerful currents. After 93 days, they sighted land. They had reached the Tuamotus, an island chain just east of Tahiti. Unable to budge the raft from her course, they sailed past the first island. Eight days later, Kantiki crashed on a reef that surrounds Roroya Island. Heyerdahl proved that drift voyages between South America and Polynesia were possible. But if the islands were settled this way, the Polynesians were neither competent sailors nor skilled navigators. Captain James Cook believed the Polynesians were skilled in both navigation and sailing. Cook spent 12 years exploring the Pacific Islands and observing the Polynesians firsthand. He saw canoes that carried tons of cargo and sailed circles around his own ships. He met navigators who made round-trip voyages between islands hundreds of miles apart. Cook was convinced that the Polynesians sailed against the winds and currents from Asia. What Cook suspected 200 years ago has now been proven conclusively by archaeologists working in the Pacific. Here on the island of Viti Levu, in Fiji, they have found evidence of migrations from Asia to Polynesia. In the Singatoka sand dunes, three layers of human settlement have been discovered. The lowest layer contains traces of an early colony. By examining simple pieces of broken pottery, like these, Dr. Roger Green has traced the roots of the Pacific pioneers. This is the lowest layer on the Singatoka dune site, and it, of course, is the one that excites us most because it's here that we find the Lapita pottery that dates back to 500, 600 BC and where we can reconstruct the whole pots from that layer. We can, of course, recognize it by its typical vessel shape and form. The important thing, of course, of this layer is that it allows us to link the kinds of material, this kind of material, with that material to the east from Tonga and Samoa, and with similar material in sites to the west in islands to the west. And the beauty of that is, of course, now we're on the track of the origins of the ancestors of the Polynesian peoples. For archaeologists, the designs on pottery are the fingerprint of a culture. Nowadays, we have these designs. Roger Green has come to Lawai village in Fiji to learn from modern potters how these ancient designs were made. Do you think we could make some of these very old designs? These are, these are thousands of years old, 3,000 years old. Green has analyzed the designs on this Lapita ware bowl and made tools to recreate this ancient pattern. Do you think we could make some of those with some wooden tools? Yes. Here's this one to mark out the, the area. You sort of have to rock it, don't you? Just like with the shell. Yes. Green has identified a series of motifs. These motifs are combined according to rigid rules, just as words are combined grammatically to produce a proper sentence. Like speaking the same language, using the same designs is evidence that, that people share a common culture. Hello. <laughs> the earliest Lapita designs have been discovered just north of New Guinea, in the Bismarck Archipelago. From here, archaeologists have traced the route of an early seafaring people who traveled eastward across 1,500 miles of open ocean, settling widely scattered islands, arriving in Fiji, 
Tonga, and Samoa more than 3,000 years ago. One of the interesting things is the support that the pottery analysis receives from the other kinds of material, materials that were exchanged between the Perius Lapita communities, things like glitter, which is used probably for some kind of body paint, the volcanic glass or obsidian, which is used for knives and scrapers and other tools, cutting tools, and then the chert, which is also used in a similar way. Now, now the one that we know the most about amongst these is the obsidian. And for instance, we know the obsidian came from the islands offshore of New Guinea in the Bismarck Archipelago. And over 700 years, it was imported out to the Solomon Islands some thousand miles away. Now, you really can't have people importing obsidian for 700 years over a thousand miles without crediting them as being very skillful navigators and sailors. Evidence is now overwhelming that the Polynesians were voyagers against wind and wave. But today, the Micronesians are the only people who build and sail voyaging canoes. The Satoalese canoe is a supreme technological achievement. Its narrow asymmetrical hull is shaped to offset the drag of the outrigger. So the canoe always sails in a straight line. These craft, called flying proas, are designed to sail with their outriggers toward the wind. To change direction, the entire sail is moved from one end of the canoe to the other. The design of the proa has been perfected over 3,000 years. Only a few men master the intricate art of making such canoes. Ikiga holds the title of Senap, Master Canoe Builder. Adzis are used to carve the bow from breadfruit lot. Ikigan uses no blueprints. Over the years, he has memorized the canoe's complex shapes. When it is finished, the bow will be taken to a canoe house to dry. There are eight canoe houses on Satawal. Each is a men's social club, school, and workshop. Yeah. 
Everything needed to make a canoe is harvested on Satawal. Rope is made from coconut fibers. Coconut husks separate into fine strands called sinnet. Senate rope is coarse and binds on itself to make good lashings for canoes. Breadfruit sap, warmed by fire, will make the seams of the canoe watertight. Flexible outer husk of a coconut provides ideal caulking between planks. Each plank has been carved to an exact shape. Wedges and palm fronds hold the planks in place until the breadfruit sap has had time to sit. Two weeks later, the canoe is almost finished and the temporary lashings are replaced with senate rope. Canoes have been built this way for centuries throughout the Pacific. These same skills are now being uncovered by archaeologists on an island 4,000 miles to the east of Satawal. On the Tahitian island of Huaini, Yoshi Sonoto from the Bishop Museum has made a remarkable discovery. Two planks from an ancient voyaging canoe. Buried for 1100 years, these are the only pieces of an ancient canoe known to exist today. At one end of the planks, Sonoto finds evidence of lashings. This canoe was held together with senate rope, just like the canoes on Setawa. In 850 AD, a tidal wave inundated this site, burying hundreds of objects in a protective layer of mud. Yoshi! What did you find? Another hook. Oh, yeah. yes. Nice, huh? Yeah, yeah that's foam. Early. Yeah. It's a lot like the other ones, the ones you can find. Yeah, just like an uh, early Marquesan one. You see that curved chunk and the notch inside. More than 200 fish hooks have been found. This one was used for catching small reef fish. This pearl shell coconut grape is shaped like those used on Setawal today. This is a pendant, an insignia of rank possibly worn by a chief. So many pearl shell artifacts have been found at Huahini that Sonoto now believes the site was a village where goods were manufactured for trade. In another part of the village, 
the archaeologists discovered a spirit stone, part of a temple, Omarai. Here, the men of Huahini performed rituals prior to departing on a voyage. 34 centimeters wide. OK, let's measure the entire length. One last wooden artifact suggests the size of their canoes. 13 feet long. This was a steering pen paddle for an 80-foot canoe. OK, the total length is 3 meters and 88 centimeters. Now, this is not a complete paddle. I don't think so, because you can see many, you know, add cut marks and very roughly outlined. So, so not well finished. The people are making or manufacturing paddle here, which means mm. that the canoe also. Right, right. Haramaru, mm. Haramaru. OK? 1,300 years ago, the people of Huahini fashioned this plank for a large voyaging canoe. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Afro Maita, eh? Hi, Afro. Hey, 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 yeah. Such canoes would have carried the Polynesians on epic voyages of colonization to the furthest reaches of the Pacific. Okay. Polynesia was settled in a vast ocean migration, which began when the Lapita people arrived in Fiji, Tonga, and Samoa more than 3,000 years ago. At about the time of Christ, they swept eastward into the heart of Polynesia. From here, they launched their longest and most difficult voyages of exploration to New Zealand, Easter Island, and Hawaii. More than 15 centuries before Captain Cook, a Polynesian canoe made a landfall in the Hawaiian Islands. This is the Halava Valley on Molokai. Ten years ago, archaeologists found traces of an ancient Hawaiian village on this site. Now overgrown with vegetation, this was home for the island's first settlers. Bishop Museum archaeologist Dr. Patrick Kirch. About 600 AD, a group of early Polynesians arrived here in the Halawa Valley on East Molokai. Now they, they found in this valley just the kind of environment they might have been searching for. Ample fresh water, lowlands where they could cultivate their taro, gentle valley slopes where they could farm sweet potato and other dry crops, and along the coastline out into the bay, an ample supply of shellfish and fish. I excavated right here in this low mound and found the remains of their early settlement site. From patterns of post molds and stone alignments, I could tell that they lived in small, round-ended huts. And scattered in amongst the huts were stone adzes, fish hooks, coral files, ornaments in shell and bone. And the styles of these artifacts were similar to those which had been found in Tahiti, the Marquesas, and other islands to the south. I also found here bones of dogs, pigs, and chickens. This is interesting because it suggests to me that these people came here on a purposeful voyage of colonization. What's so interesting about the Halawa Valley is it serves as kind of microcosm for the development of Hawaiian society from initial settlement right up through the evolution of complex chiefdoms. Seduced by their island's abundant resources, the Hawaiians gave up their voyaging and began farming the rich valley slopes. In each valley, chiefs rose to power. 
They fought each other for control of entire islands. Great temples celebrate their conquests and their gods. In the final centuries before Captain Cook's arrival, the chiefs of Hawaii waged frequent warfare. This is a dwelling cave here in Kona, which was also used as a refuge in times of war. The site is unique because of the stick figures or petroglyphs, which the commoners who lived here pecked into the glassy lava walls of the cave. Here we have a human figure with a canoe paddle raised above his head. Here's a similar human figure. Again, he holds canoe paddle above his head. This looks like a fish hook. It's interesting to speculate that much of the development in Hawaiian society came originally uh, out of the nature of long distance voyaging. The navigator in chief had to have unquestioned authority if the voyage was to succeed. The crew who were with him had to believe that he would lead them to a new land. And so I think it's possible to say that much of the development of powerful chiefdoms in Hawaii came originally out of the society of the canoe. In 1976, the society of the canoe is reborn. Hokulea is an exact replica of a Polynesian voyaging canoe. This just will be at the front of your Right. Now you're up. Yeah. Built with modern materials, her design is ancient. Hokulea will sail between Hawaii and Tahiti to celebrate the age-old skills of Polynesian canoe builders and navigators. The canoe carries a crew of 17 and six tons of supplies. Hokuleo's voyage will be made as it was a thousand years ago, without maps or instruments. She will be guided by Mal Pialuk. Yeah, maybe. David Lewis, a Western navigator and scholar, has joined the expedition to learn Mao's way of navigating. The passage is 2,500 miles, far longer than any Mao has made. And he is sailing in unfamiliar waters. The first few days I was afraid, but I've been through all this before. I've sailed at sea for many nights, and I've survived many storms. So I put aside my fears, and I was happy to be at sea again. As the sea miles slip by, the Hawaiian crew gain a new respect for their Polynesian ancestors. The Polynesians used to navigate the way we do today, without instruments or charts. They had faith in the words of their fathers. This is what we call courage. With this courage, you can travel anywhere in the world and never be lost. Because I have faith in the words, I am a navigator. I learned these words as a young boy in my father's canoe house. On Santawal, Mao passes on these teachings to a new generation of navigators. <laughs> Mao begins with the simplest framework, what we might think of as a star compass. 32 lumps of coral represent the rising and setting points of stars. The compass is oriented to the east. The rising of a star called Myla, the big bird. Uh -huh. 
يكونيك هو اللون تاع الماء البرفان و الولد الفيشما هنا او بانك بيا هريو ان فان نيم نيم و الفيش باش فاي لي بتال ما يبان ما و الولد الولد يبان بيك لي بارينا بار فيش فاي بار فيش فاي بيك ما يبان مور الرقاير اليون سربون تمور مسار تعرف تعلق ما تسمعش هو اللي بيقول لك عليه Mao's compass is defined by the rising and setting points of stars. My lap always rises to the east of Satawal and sets in the west to define two compass points. Mool rises in the northeast and sets in the northwest. This is Tumor. The stars of the constellation we call Southern Cross always point south. The axis of the Earth's rotation points at the star that never moves. Wula Wulafang, the North Star. Mao's star compass is a simple teaching device. The nighttime sky is actually far more complex. In June, the stars move across the eastern sky like this. Two more is rising and can be used to steer a canoe to the southeast. By midnight, Tumor has risen too high above the horizon, so Ma will steer by another star, which appears later in the, in the same place. Six stars follow the same path as Tumor. Each compass point is defined by many stars. In all, Mao has memorized the paths of more than 150. After 20 days at sea, Hokulea nears the equator. Tahiti lies 1,400 miles away, and Mao steers toward the rising Tumor. And now, which course are we steering now? Which, which uh, about about uh, Tumor. Oh, Tumor. Yeah. Oh, better. So that's about southeast. So southeast, yeah. Uh, yes. Tumor is where Antares, the yeah. star Antares, oh, yeah. we call. Oh, that means. Uh, when he rises. Yeah. <laughs> we see him later on tonight. <laughs> yeah. A thousand miles from Tahiti, Hokulea encounters heavy seas. For eight days and nights, clouds obscure the sky, and Mao is denied even a glimpse of his guiding stars. He maintains his course by relying on other signs. Yes, ที่เลยรูปที่ฟ้าเลยตัวไม่ละอยู่เรื่อยๆเลยแต่ปวดหลังยังปวดอีกพวกเราเลยที่อย่างงูเมาค่ะใช้กันเราเลยที่อย่าง
Torong Ferma and Lai, Erosu Torong, Ekusume, Sume support. A skilled navigator senses every rising and falling of his canoe. Even when he cannot see the swells, he can set his course by them. This wave, where, where is it coming from? From now? From Naira? From Naira, that's just north of east. Yeah. Uh, the east. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And um, another one from uh, Merth, northeast. Oh, yes. Another one from uh, uh, southeast. So <coughs> even at night, you can feel the wave. Yeah. yeah. Hokulea has now sailed more than 2,000 miles through changing ocean currents and shifting winds. Yet Mao always knows the direction and distance to Tahiti. Daily, he fixes Hokulea's position by estimating course and speed, and all the other forces acting on the canoe. The map Mao sails exists only in his mind. Yet over 2,500 miles of ocean, his estimated positions are never more than 40 miles in error. On the 30th day at sea, he accurately predicts landfall within 24 hours. Mao's quest is fulfilled has brought ancient navigational skills back to Polynesian waters and reawakened a people's pride in their great voyaging heritage. Hokulea's arrival was celebrated as a national holiday. 20,000 spectators crowded the shores to greet their heroic brothers. The trip to Tahiti was very good because it will remind those people of what their ancestors did and make them want to learn about it. Our ancestors valued navigation as a source of pride. Children today are different. Some are afraid to learn navigation and some are just lazy. Without navigators, Sazawal will be abandoned. Everyone will move to bigger islands like Truk, Saipan, and Guam to look for jobs. Now only the old men, the men of my generation, love to navigate and want to see it continue.
I don't know what will happen to my son-in-law. I think he will leave the island and take my daughter with him. Many of my sons have already gone. I gave them my blessings. My son-in-law went away to school. Many of the men of my crew have gone to school. I was sent away too, but when I came back, I continued to study navigation. I never lost interest. But most of the younger men who went away to school had no interest in navigation when they came back to Satawa. That's the reason I won't let my youngest son, Cesario, and Stan go away. I want them to stay here and learn as much as I can teach them before I die. They can go to school here, but not on any other island. I want them to stay here. I wanted to make this film because when young people see it, they may begin to understand how important navigation is. I have already told them that if they don't study navigation, we will lose it forever. The film will make them think about what we are losing. That's why the film is important. Because I'm afraid that after my generation, there will be no more navigators. This trip, because um, when when the people in here they want to take me to home, then now I'm happy. 
What do you, what do you uh, why is it important, do you think, the, the rebirthing of voyaging in, in Hawaii and, and uh, Polynesia in general, why is that important that we keep doing that? Oh, I think same, same, because uh, before they, they know that, but after they follow the uh, Hawaii custom, that's why they, they lost. But when I came to Hawaii, then I, I start teach them. Now is they, they know about that. That's why I'm happy when they get some uh, that kind of or something. And just describe your journey today. What, describe what, where you're going to go today and from here to where you're going. You'll be uh, today, today is, uh, we leave from here to Matsuro. From here to Matsuro. Uh -huh. Then Matsuro to Kusai. Kusai Wana, Wana Peka Pingo. Kapping a chuk and our right to chuk chuk. Pulna Puluat, Mahalan Saruan, Saruan Taipan, Saipan and Guam. That's all. And you've sailed this before? No. No, no. So, what kind of, yeah. what are some of the d difficulties you might have? Now, now it's first time. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the difficulties you, you expect? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> No. Yeah, maybe they respect because <laughs> they make it they happy when <laughs> Monday afternoon, having lunch. <laughs> what are we having today? We are having turkey on a king on crackers. Living on sweet cocktail. We have uh, bossy food. Fresh up, we got about two hours ago.